I told man Huey and old lady Sybil over fussing. Ever since they got old like they are, that's all they do is fuss every day. And I'm going to tell you, it makes my nerves bad. This time of the year, I fish a lot of creeks. And the reason is, one reason is, the water temperature is a lot warmer, three, four degrees sometimes. Sometimes you can move far back up in the creek and it'll be as much as five degrees difference than the main lake. This moves in a lot of bait, uh, generally. Depends on the weather conditions, but usually there's a lot of bait back up in these creeks. The water is very, very clear. And the three colors that works for me in clear water, these are all Bobby Garland baits, by the way. And there's a lot of baits that will work, but I like natural colors, like this uh, Blue Eyes, made by Bobby Garland. This bait, this bait right here is catching me a lot of fish, too. It's called the Blue Thunder, made by Bobby Garland. And another one that always works is called the live minnow, which it looks just like a toughy, toughy minnow, or minner. Now these baits right here, I get far more strikes, even on bad days, using natural colors, realistic colors. Join me for a few minutes. Let's catch a few crappie. Hey, woo, crappie. Woo, woo! Well, good morning, folks. It's Richard Jean, the fishing machine here. Today, well, I'm going to start off right here in the mouth of a creek. The water is extremely clear. Now, in clear water, there's no doubt that a blue ice is my favorite color. There's no doubt about it. There's something about that color. I don't know what it is, but crappie will bite it. Now, it's about... 42 degrees this morning the water temp right here in this creek believe it or not is 49 degrees almost 50 degrees uh, these creeks well the, the water's normally warmer and that's what I look for in the winter time now I'm gonna start off with a sow belly rod it's six and a half feet light as a feather folks and this is a Fago 20 LT 2500 size reel loaded up with eight pound braid and I have a fluorocarbon leader it's a six pound carb core fluorocarbon leader excuse me I can't talk uh, tied with a double uni knot I use about a six foot connection so the first thing we got to do is figure out how deep the crappie are this water is awful clear folks so they could be deep real deep when the water is as cold as it is right now slow is the deal guarantee you that there he is boy that water is clear folks clear clear a little black crappie right there they just something about a blue ice jig in in clear water i don't know of a color that beat it i'm gonna be honest with you quiet he wouldn't let go of it little black crappie let's let him go now this braid is so sensitive folks I don't always use braid when I'm crappie fishing. Most of the time it's four pound test, mono. So with braid and a fluorocarbon leader, you have to make sure to hold back on that hook set because you will rip a crappie's mouth. But as far as sensitivity, you can't beat braid. Uh, when I'm using mono, I usually I use high vis mono. I'm a line watcher. And I can keep up with that high vis line, and I'm, I'll, I'll watch the line, that thump, right where it hits the water. But on braid, 
you can feel it like right there I got a bite but that wasn't a crappie that was a bluegill or it felt like one we'll make a cast back in there and make sure if it's a crappie we'll catch him let's make another cast right there they're not grouped up is what's going on they're scattered there's one They just ain't no size. Now that one's kind of dark. He's been down there around them, the base of those rocks. Just laying there. Let's let him go. Little thing. There he goes. Now this is a 132nd ounce jig, folks. I can let that bait fall down around six feet which it is right now and hold that rod up and just let that bait fall back to me and that's about the best presentation you can have for a crappie see that bait's moving even though i'm not moving it and i'm keeping that bait around six feet that 132nd jig is something else when it comes to crappie fishing it has the fall rate that to me is close to perfect and as y'all know there's no such thing as perfect real slow i'm just letting that jig fall back to me there he is you know this is kind of a weird deal right here i'm going to explain it to y'all folks look at that fish y'all see him? <laughs> he ain't even fighting all the baits right in the middle of this creek and i've been vertical jigging thinking the better fish is out here in the middle of the creek there ain't no crappie out here in the middle of the creek the only thing i can think of now i've had this happen a few times is that those rocks are generating enough heat where the water temperature is even just a little bit warmer and those fish are just relating to the rocks that's the only thing i can figure out i've had it happen a few times but not exactly like this there's more crappie along them rocks than what i thought because it's a consistent bite i'll show you what i mean right here i'm gonna let it fall about six feet deep right there and i'm just gonna hold my rod tip up and I'm taking in just a little bit of line. I'm maintaining that depth. Out from the rocks, 10, 12 feet, like that, I get a bite. That's how I'm having to catch them. That's exactly what I'm having to do to catch them. Ain't that something? Now this one's a little bit better fish than what I've been catching. That's a little better. But the deal is with crappie is to figure out how to get them to buy it when they're not really wanting to. That's what I try to do. To be able to catch them every day, you gotta do different things. Weather conditions factors in in a big way when it comes to crappie fishing. Let's make another cast right there that's close to the same spot we're gonna let it fall around six feet that's about six feet hold that rod up and just barely barely take up the line is all you're doing and then i missed him but that was a crappie that was a crappie so really there's a lot of crappie down this section of rocks. There's no doubt about it. Now that we got them figured out. A lot to this. A lot to it. But they're relating to that bank right there. Just off the rocks, about 15 feet from the rocks. I'm letting that jig fall 
about six feet deep. All right, let's just let it come real slow. I'm maintaining that six foot just by bringing that line back to me. I mean, by holding my rod up and taking that line slack out of the line as the jig is falling to me. That takes a little time to master that, but you can do it easier with a one 32nd ounce jig than you can a 16th. And the speed that it's coming back to me, you know, is matching the metabolism of the fish right now, the activity level of the fish. See, they just keep biting, folks. I got them figured out right here. Now, I'm going to tell you something. Let's say if I were to go down the river to a spot or two, I might have to fish totally different because the way I'm fishing right now may not work. In all likelihood, it won't work. It just depends on the area that you're fishing and how active the fish are in that area. But these are dead. I mean, look right here. This is what I'm doing. Letting that jig just float back to me. Taking up that line as it's sinking to me. It's a slow way of fishing, but I tell you, it's very effective when, when crappie don't want to bite. Look here. Just a light, faint bite. Well, if nothing else, it's good practice. It's good practice and it's a good way to concentrate. <laughs> it really is. It makes a, because I'm not gonna run in, there's no telling how many times I'm gonna run into this same situation. And when this happens, folks, don't forget about it. Study it on the way home after you get done fishing. Study that and lock it into your memory what you did under certain weather conditions to catch crappie when you were told they wasn't biting. Forget about going crappie fishing. They ain't biting. They're locked, y'all. That's just simply not so. That's not so at all. Come on in here. Yeah. Crappie have remarkable eyesight. They'll come up for a bait. They feed up. By nature, they feed up. And in water clarity like this, they could come two, three, four feet up, I imagine. So fishing high is the deal when you're crappie fishing. All right, folks, that pretty well sums it up for today. Um, that's how I go about catching inactive crappie, keeping that bait right in front of their face. Um, those are the type of crappie that you would never know existed unless you fished that way, very slow, keeping that bait in front of their face. Um, I went on down the river and I checked about 10 holes to try to catch better fish. However, those holes was dry. That's fishing. Now tomorrow, they could be full of big crappie. Every day is different when it comes to crappie fishing. I want to say I appreciate everything y'all have done through the years for this channel. And I'm going to say this also. God bless each and every one of y'all for supporting this channel and, and just being good to me. Hey. Remember, go fishing when you can, but call it.
Yeah, what are you?